ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in again for another episode of the Dumpster Diaries. As always, I am your host, Justin Allen. And I am Moses Wartooth. And we've got some stories for you today. I think we're just going to jump right into it in the recent news. Uh, have you seen the story about Aaron Patterson from Australia? No. Oh, my God. So uh, this lady, she's 48 years old. She's from Australia. Um, she essentially killed, like, basically tried to kill her whole family. Fuck. Yeah. How? Uh, so this is what your shirt is actually what reminded me of this because you're wearing a mushroom like Hawaiian shirt or whatever. <laughs> but uh, so she cooked a meal with mushrooms she claimed she got from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, like portobello, white caps, whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, those mushrooms were actually death caps. Okay. Super toxic, like instantly cause liver failure, like will basically rot you from inside out. So pretty sure she didn't pick those up at the local Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> That's a going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> yeah. you know? I don't think I don't I think mean, so. last time I was there, I never saw. Them. Yeah. And so she um, she cooks this meal and she invites her ex-husband. OK, that's a red flag, I would think. Yeah, but they had a kid. OK, they had a kid. So, uh, you know, like, you know, Maybe parents never trying to make it work. Yeah, you know, you be cordial <laughs> for the kid, right? And uh, so she invites her ex-husband over and his parents, so her ex-in-laws. Uh-huh. And then I guess his friend was like the pastor of like their local church. So that dude just tags along, right? <laughs> and so uh, she cooks this meal with these death cap mushrooms and they're super toxic mushrooms, right? And she serves it to them but she makes a meal for her and her son, like a separate meal. Okay, that's that, not suspicious at all. It does not contain these mushrooms, right? I want. Do you know what she like? What dish it was? Like I have no idea. Was it spaghetti with fucking shrooms in it, or like what the, <laughs> like like mushroom or pizza with mushrooms? Or like, what the fuck? Hey guys, we have stuffed mushrooms. Yeah, like, <laughs> those stuffed, things are good, man. Stuffed death cap. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> those stuffed mushrooms from Outback, man. I'd, I'll shovel a whole yeah, plate down. Mushrooms my... are fuck. I mean, I just like Whew. I like all mushrooms pretty much. So they're good, man. Yeah. They're good. You ever meet people that just like hate mushrooms? You're like, yeah. what is wrong with you, man? Like, so I didn't like good. them when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. Oh, I've always loved them, man. I could eat a whole freaking tray of those. I've developed a, a taste for them over time. Yeah. Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, so she cooks this meal and she feeds it to him, right? And she's got her separate meal for her and her kid, and then like. These guys like instantly get sick. Fuck. Like Just, at the table, like <laughs> I think it takes like a few hours to like kick in, but like, you know, throwing up, vomiting, stuff like that. So there's shortly thereafter. Yeah. They're, they're so in the, pretty they're fast in the they know something is terribly wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> you know? And uh so they get to the hospital or whatever, and you know, they they do their toxicology and they they figure out, they're like, okay, like they've essentially eaten these super toxic mushrooms, right? Yeah. And um so then out of the four people who consumed that meal, three are dead now. And Is the this, priest alive? I don't know if it's the priest or not. I think it's actually her ex-mother-in-law is alive still. Oh, okay. Yes, I think the rest of them are all fucking dead. <laughs> so, like, God didn't help them. Yeah, and this just happened on July, uh, on July 29th. So this is not very, very long recent, ago. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and uh, so she has been getting like harassed right obviously there's like the police doing their investigation right yeah so they go to the grocery store they pull everything and they do this whole and they're like uh yeah these things never were here. here yeah no fucking surprise yeah and it's like and you know me with like school like i've worked in like toxicology and stuff yeah. like dealing with like samples and stuff like from like a chemistry like a chemistry biochemistry perspective like it's not they're not just picking up a mushroom going oh what is this Whoop. like i mean there's they're probably i'm just gonna assume shot in the dark they're wiping down every fucking anything. Those any mushrooms have touched. They're wiping down, taking samples, and they're gonna figure out like they're yeah, because those spores. spores fall all over the place. Yeah, and they're like, microscopic. You can't even see them with yeah. the naked eye, you know. And uh, <laughs> so these motherfuckers, like, I mean, they just started dropping like flies. But these cops are like all up on her ass, and the media is on her shit. She did that shit. Yeah, there's no fucking way. If like giving your self serving yourself and your kid a separate meal is a goddamn red flag in itself. And you know what? Like, to me, like, what's interesting, if you watch the interview, okay, because they just did a recent interview, because the press is, like, outside of her house, right? Yeah. And she's basically getting harassed. Like, anytime some shit goes down, this is going to happen. you fucking kill some people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, they, she talks to him, which I would never Fuck do. no. Be, <laughs> like, nothing you say is going to help it over my face. Like, get the fuck out of here. I'd be looking like Michael Jackson's son, Blank. Yeah. <laughs> you know, blanket. Get over here. <laughs> 
That's ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he have like he had his kids wear masks and yeah, shit, he did. right? Yeah. And I think, yeah. And um, so like this media is just like outside her house, like hounding her, right? And she's just like sobbing, and she's just like. I cooked this meal. I didn't mean for this to happen. Like completely like playing the ignorant card. And she's talking about how much like she loves like, you know, her family and Bullshit. like all this other stuff. And she's hoping that like her mother-in-law pulls through and is like praying. But I'm like, I watched the video several times. It's like a three minute video. It's easy to find on YouTube. Just Google Australian woman poisons family with mushrooms and that'll come right up. Yeah, <laughs> it's like number, not too many of those around. Yeah, so. Number one pick or whatever, <laughs> dude. And um, so her reaction is she is like visibly upset. Yeah. But what I saw, and this is just experience of seeing people get in trouble, like over the years and me personally being in trouble when I was younger and stuff. I did not see a person that had remorse for killing people. Okay. I saw a person who was fucking scared. You saw of guilt getting in trouble, not even guilt, but just like scared of being like incarcerated, being like punished, eating, like all that. Like it was like literally like a, like a rat in a cage. Yeah. You know, and it, it's just, it's just to me, it's just it, the whole story is just kind of off. You know, it's just like, like th this bitch actually fucking killed like her whole family. Well, the, the smarter thing would have been to give herself and her son a little, a small amount, so that they would have got sick too. Yeah. Then it would have been way more believable if the, if everyone oh, yeah. at the table got sick you instead of, like, you could have been like, look, I got fucking sick too. I almost died. Yeah, you could have walked on that shit easy, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But here's the here's the fucking kicker to all this. Apparently, this is not the first time this chick has tried this. So she's poisoned before? Yes. Has she killed like, before? I, I or think was it a failed poison? From what I remember, if I remember correctly, I think it was her ex-husband had reported, like, getting sick as fuck and then, then basically, like, determining, like, hey, man, like, you're coming in, like, contact with shit that, like, you shouldn't be, like, probably poisonous mushrooms. Oh, <laughs> you know she, what I mean? She yeah. did that shit 100%. Yep. Yeah, man. Because they were like just getting like people like her family were just getting sick as fuck, and they were just like, "What is going on?" Man, I've watched like multiple forensic files episodes and that kind of shit, yeah. and like, there it's always women. Women are gonna poison you, not men. Men are just gonna fucking kill you up front, but a woman will try to poison you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a woman will poison you over time. So don't always trust the beef stew. But like, they'll a lot of them have repeated offenses. They'll be on like husband number four with mysterious mm. fucking sickness deaths, and it's she'll be like over time. They were giving them fucking ricin or arsenic, like just yeah. small trace amounts to just build up that sickness over time. Mm -hmm. And eventually it fucking gets them. Yeah. It's kind of like that shitty M. Night Shyamalan movie, The Sign, or what was it? Not Signs. It was um, I See Dead People. What was that? Sixth Sense. Oh. Bruce Willis. Yeah, yeah. It turns out like he's actually dead in the end and all that shit or whatever. And he's one of the ghosts the kids can see. Yeah. Well, if you go back and watch that fucking movie or whatever, like there's a scene where this woman is poisoning her daughter by putting Clorox, like, <laughs> in her like soup <laughs> god right? damn and it's like and the kids like she's like force feeding this kid this shit and it's like you know like a 10 year old girl or whatever yeah. and like everyone like, can't understand like why she's so sick and this mysterious illness and shit and i, I was just like dude have you smelled a bottle yeah, of Clorox? Like, <laughs> the soup smells like fucking bleach yeah it was like it was like that pine salt shit or whatever oh. dude like there's no way a human being could like stomach that you know what i mean no. like and you'd walk in a room you'd smell that shit you'd dude like, do you remember whenever we were kids <laughs> do you remember whenever we were kids always heard they were like, if you want to pass a drug test, just drink a cap full of bleach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that, buddy. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm sure you might pass a drug test, but you might not the, show up living to fucking take the motherfucker. Like, <laughs> dude, there's all kinds of like weird rumors and stuff. You know, like I remember because we went through the D.A.R.E. program, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, looking back, that was a fucking joke. You know what I mean? For sure. And uh, it would have just been better just to be honest and educate people like, hey, like some of these are actually fun and like pleasurable like but here's do them like, in a correct environment yeah and you shouldn't be teaching fifth graders that shit yeah because we're like wait we can get high on fucking markers and paint yeah hell yeah <laughs> i never heard about inhalants until i took that class no. now nitrous oxide is one of my favorite things in the <laughs> world dude <laughs> like, you know it has been for a long time <laughs> and, uh, so um <clears throat> excuse me but uh yeah man um i don't know you gotta be careful what's out there man you never know right Especially don't eat that shit someone else cooking up, you know? Always watch them be like, <laughs> uh, or swap their plate whenever they get up. Be like, oh, we go get me a roll. Yeah. Do the old switcheroo. <laughs> but going, yeah. going back to like the whole like, you know, rumors and shit. Um, you were talking about like, you know, taking a cap full of bleach to pass piss tests, you know, because you're smoking weed and stuff. And it's like, I don't know. I remember being kids like growing up or whatever. And like you would just, you would hear crazy shit. Like I remember being told like if you took ecstasy, like MDMA, it was equivalent to like literally every single tab you ever took. 
regardless of the dose (laughs) (laughs) was like taking an ice cream scooper and literally scooping out a piece of your brain and just throwing it oh yeah because it was always was it ecstasy will give you holes in your brain yes uh, mushrooms make your brain bleed ecstasy gives you holes in your brain and one of them and LSD would make you think you're a glass of orange juice and you can never lay down because you think you're sick over and die. <laughs> there was one that was, it might, it might have been the acid one, but it was like, it makes your, yeah, I guess it was because the thing was like, it'll it'll make your brain fucking drip back into your spine and that's when they do the fucking spinal tap and shit like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, dude. Totally we also sure. always thought that like spinal taps were just like super easy to do and like it was going to happen to me working at a goddamn <laughs> grocery store when I'm 16 too. Like, You know, growing up, it all came back to You'll know exactly who I'm talking about. The one girl that was a year ahead of us in high school. Oh, that I used to tell Ashley. Yeah, she would. She would like spread all of that shit or whatever. But like it wasn't she, just her because that shit was at other schools too. Like I don't know. I'm just gonna blame her. Okay, that's because <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> she would just hear something and then she would just like pawn it off as like absolute truth or whatever and just run around telling everyone. I'm just like whatever. So I'm like man, now I look back and I'm just like. How many people believed like this crazy shit she was telling us? <laughs> she's telling us? I don't know. She probably, she probably heard it from a dare officer, honestly. Because they would say weird shit. But you remember those like um, those commercials that used to come out or whatever? Where they, they were just... awesome, where the kids were like flattened out balloons <laughs> and like on the couch and people moving shit. <laughs> My favorite one was like the kid who's like sitting in like his bedroom at like the desk and he's like rolling, basically rolling the blunt. But he's like building a cocoon around him, and then I don't know if you've seen this one, uh, but like yeah, he's so. he's every every single time he's getting high, he's like adding to this cocoon, right? And then he becomes this huge like cocoon bud, and then he just busts out of it. And he's like forty five years old, but <laughs> like it just a burnout. Got, yeah, got a beer gut, of, like a beard, like he's got like a fucking horseshoe thing and super long hair. He's talking about not wasting your life smoking weed. <laughs> I remember there was another one. It was a cartoon. But it was a it was a cartoon kid. It was a like stick figure drawing. But it was a kid, and he was smoking a joint. And then this cartoon dog walks up to him, and he's like, he he's, he says, "Hey, you want to go for a walk?" And the kid's like, "No, nah, I'm good." And the, then the dog says, "You disappoint me." And then just, it just ends like <laughs> they were good, man. I like that one. Like it provides an absolutely no context. It's like this is your brain. And then, like, he's holding an egg or whatever. And oh, then he has, like, a hot skillet. That's the he's classic like, He's like, one. this is your brain on drugs. And then he just cracks it and throws it in there. He's like, see? And, yeah. like, there's, like, literally no context whatsoever. Do you remember there was one with fucking Pee Wee Herman? And he yes. was like, this crack. is crack cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a funny one. <laughs> that dude. one was funny. I think that's, uh, I think he did that one because he got in trouble. Oh, it was I th- like. I think uh, that's what it was. Because he, because there was a, he got in trouble. Um, because he got caught jerking off in a uh, movie theater. Movie theater, yeah. yeah. It was it was like a porn theater or whatever. Like I think it was in San Francisco. It was in California. Um, and a part of like his deal was if I if I remember correctly, a part of his deal was like he had to do like community service. And so then the kids the, about crack. Next thing you know, he's dressed up as Pee Wee Herman, and he's just like, "This is crack cocaine. This is bad." <laughs> that was a fucking so, some band I used to listen to sampled that part, and then it was like after that, it was a death metal song. It oh, was really? funny as fuck, yeah, because it was like, "This is crack cocaine," and then it was like, "Oh." <laughs> then like after that, like he just went like he went underground for a long time. He didn't even come back out until he did that movie Blow with Johnny Depp. He was in that movie. Oh yeah, dude. I don't, yeah. I, I, well, I, he I was a California. Movie, he was I, a California connection. I barely remember that show. Or yeah. That movie, but. When Johnny Depp's first getting started, and he's trying to sell weed and trying to find a wholesaler. It's Pee Wee Herman, <laughs> and the dude is like, he runs like an all male barber salon or whatever, <laughs> and he's like, I, mean, I, I think if I remember right, he was gay in the movie, but he's like super flamboyant and shit. Oh, like yeah. has like long hair, like earrings and stuff, yeah. and like wearing you know those. This classic like seventies like silk flannel sh- I don't know which we would you call them like you know what I'm talking about I know what you're talking about but yeah like the tight <laughs> shit with the purple pants or whatever yeah too, like, like buttoned down like halfway yeah, down yeah. or whatever you know <laughs> but uh but no he played a good fucking role in that you know true story it's a good story I like it old Pee Wee R I P yeah you know that dude just died too right? yeah 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 it sucks man you know how he died no nah, I don't know either oh <laughs> probably fucking old age and coke probably, probably. crack cocaine <laughs> yeah this, this <laughs> is crack <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> Watch me smoke this shit. <laughs> yeah, just fucking drops dead. I don't know, man. Drugs are, drugs are, drugs are bad. Okay, like I mean, you, you, can't, you can't trust anything that's out there anymore, man. Like I know we talked about it several times on this show. Like, there's no way if I like, now in my adult life, there's no way I'd, I would touch a pill or a powder. Fuck no, man. You can't trust Fuck anything. No. Fuck no. Speaking of that, I was actually watching some shit the other day, and University of Texas is the number one consumer of fentanyl in the entire united states are you serious yeah yeah i think uh 
Tom Segura had a guest on your mom's house and they were talking about it and he did like a really funny joke and he was like, he did the bullhorns and he uh-huh. was like, hook them. <laughs> oh, <God, laughs> like, you know, yeah, dude. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, apparently like, so like I, I don't know if it's just straight fentanyl, well, but it's like yeah, drugs that's, that's that what have I was gonna fentanyl. Ask. Yeah, are they yeah. like just outright looking for fucking yeah. fentanyl or are they like just buying the shit that's laced? These motherfuckers know how to party, dude. Everyone, I guess so. I've known a few people that went to UT, man, and like, that shit ain't no joke, dog. Yeah. Yeah. I've considered like transferring down there for my, ma- <laughs> for, for my master's and <laughs> just being like, fuck it, let's do this. <laughs> Show up as like a chemistry major. It'll take you twice as long to graduate if you have twice the fun. <laughs> shit, like that, that fucking retired Burt Kreischer. He, oh. went to, he, he went to fucking University of, uh, of, he went to Florida State or whatever. Did you know, did you hear about this? Took, no. him, took him six years to graduate with a four year degree. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't like, I'll start shitting on Bert like hardcore man because I just don't think he's funny I don't, I don't I don't like his like persona and all that shit yeah. I think he's very annoying but um a little backstory I'll just tell you real quick I guess but uh he he went to the university of uh well we went to Florida State or whatever mm-hmm. and uh he there, were, there was an article that came out in Rolling Stones while he was a student there like in his sixth year like I don't even know if he actually even like fucking graduated. Like honestly, <laughs> he might have. I don't know. But Rolling Stones, I believe, did an article, and at that time when he was there, like Florida State was the number one party university in the entire country. Oh fuck, okay. And they did like an excerpt, like bio on Bert, and he was like the number one like frat bro like partier, and that's where he first got like his like little, little media bit of fame. attention. Yeah. Okay. And so that's where that whole like persona. drunken blubbering idiot comes like persona comes from is like he just thinks it's cool as fuck and he's just like Bleh! like yeah because he's still living like he's fucking twenty two years old yeah yeah you know which in his case probably twenty four <laughs> you know yeah. trying to get out of there I watched a uh, interesting video with him uh, I guess Adam Sandler does not care for him too much really mm-hmm. yeah he uh, he did a podcast or like a little web interview I wouldn't even call it a podcast it was more like a web interview with uh adam sandler and burt claims he was not drunk during this process you watch the video this dude is fucked up <laughs> <laughs> like i mean he's not like one eye closed like slurring and shit he's, you can definitely tell he's yeah, he has no fucking shirt on like he's just acting a fucking fool and he's like like adam sandler's just like cool like he's just calm cool and collective or whatever yeah and he's just like okay like whatever like and they're just talking and then it's like the beginning of the pandemic so they're over zoom or whatever and burt's just like talking adam sandler up he's like you've been my idol like all this other shit like i've always looked up to you your movies are great uh he said what was it he got he basically got the name of every movie that adam sandler was in was wrong how do you get those movies yes. wrong dude so he said like <laughs> like happy gilbert or something <laughs> he said like uh, he said like my kids and i are gonna watch all your movies like we're gonna start it's gonna be our thing he's basically just trying to stroke adam sandler's dick and he was like you know we're gonna watch happy madison <laughs> tonight and he and then he just goes on this like rant. He was like, dude, he's like, I love all your fucking movies. He was like, yeah, he's like, I, I think he said he, either he just watched or he was going to watch Precious Gems that just came out on Netflix, which the movie is called Uncut Gems, <laughs> <laughs> and, right? which is a great movie, by the way. Um, it's very like Adam Sandler is not funny in it at all. Oh, like, okay. I was going to say, like, I haven't seen any of his comedy yeah. shit. In he a plays a degenerate time. gambler and he gets it fucking right, dude. Huh, that's cool. But uh, and then he, he like Bert just goes on this like fucking rant about how like ace ventura was like his be- like his favorite fucking movie ever and adam sandler's like i'm not in ace ventura <laughs> yeah <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like that was john Kerry. he's like i, I, I had nothing not john Kerry, jim Kerry. yeah um he's like i had nothing to do with that shit <laughs> you know and then like then bird just goes on this huge rant of like talking himself up and he's just like oh you got to watch my new special like it's like I don't, I don't know some fucking piece of shit name like hey big boy or some shit like that he was like it's on netflix and then he just he asked adam sandler he's like do you have netflix and Adam Sandler, like, basically his jaw is, like, dropping on the floor. Like, what is this guy's fucking problem? Because Sandler had just cut a $200 million deal with, with Netflix. With Netflix, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think they ended up bumping it. I think it's even higher now. I think it's, like, 500 Like, it's it's a lot of money. Yeah. And that's why you see like, so many uh, movies I come own out. part of Netflix at this point, motherfucker. Like, don't be talking <laughs> yeah. to me about that and shit. And so he's just like, yeah, I have Netflix. <laughs> you know? like, So it's just like, whatever, dude. I don't know. I, I go on a fucking rant for fucking days. <laughs> but, like... You know, like his advice to like his kids, he, like I saw something with like with his shit or whatever, uh, was for drugs. Like he was trying to be like I don't know. He was trying to sound cool and edgy. I don't fucking know, dude. And he like basically told like his kids he was like, 
you know, like drugs can be really fun. Like you have to be responsible or whatever when you're using them or whatnot. And like the kids are like fairly young and shit, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, he was like, so he's like, my advice to you is like, just take half. Wait an hour, see how you feel. If you like it, take the other half. <laughs> and I'm just like, are you fucking retarded? Like, do you not realize like what like poison is actually out there on the streets? I know so many countless stories of like people who have like overdosed from like fentanyl because they thought they were taking Xanax. Yeah. And they even took like a quarter of a fucking bar. Yeah, like dude. not even a full fucking dosage for a regular person anyways and they still die off that shit yeah i don't know i'm not a fan of bert i just i think he's totally like fake or whatever i i'll go down a fucking rabbit hole like we'll be here, we'll be here for fucking you've heard it before i will be here for two fucking hours or whatever because all the stories are made up yeah they're all clearly made up like i mean, like i saw like clip and he was just like i swear to god i've seen like three people get struck by lightning like struck by lightning so like, i swear to god like, that's how every every statement he has is like i swear to god <laughs> and it's just like some outrageous like one upper story like you could just be like Oh man, like I went to the gym and ran a mile today, and he'd be like, yeah, "I swear to God, like I ran fucking ten miles this morning. I swear to God, and I drink like fourteen. And then I chugged sixteen bottles of beer. <laughs> yeah, at fourteen margaritas before yeah. we even got started. Okay, <laughs> swear to God, my body's good. I get blood work. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but I just don't like. I don't, I don't like you know celebrities, whatever that like where drugs and alcohol become like their persona. Like you know what I mean? That is who they are, and that's what they identify. You know what I mean? Like well, I, I just think it's very cheap. It, it, I, don't I just know. think you're. I think you should grow out of it. Like everybody has their fucking party yeah. phase, drunk, like idiot phase. But then eventually, like, don't just make that your entire fucking life goal. Like, and you're like in your mid fifties. Yeah, like, that's just not fun yeah. anymore. People just feel bad for you. Like you're uh, gonna die. <laughs> my big thing too is like promoting like drug use now, especially like because like they'll be on there and be like, oh, like you know, I got snorted cocaine or like I did Molly or whatever. It's like there's so much like dangerous shit out there now like I, would, I just wouldn't even feel right like even promoting that you know what i mean yeah you can't trust anything that's out there i mean even like legit shit you can't even trust it dude like um what's in your food all this other shit like this lab grown meat crap they're trying to come out with and stuff all these toxins and shit like uh the fucking bottled water industry is like a big one. Oh yeah yeah you know that's about a that goddamn shit? scam in itself that is the biggest scam in the fucking world dude like it's essentially just all tap water yeah like most of it it comes out of fucking people's sinks or the rest of it, like, most of them all come from the same place. There's no goddamn magical mountain stream that this shit is coming mm -hmm. out of. Like, all of that stuff is bullshit. Yeah, dude. And uh, I was reading some shit where, oh, what was it? <clears throat> the, what was it? One third of bottled water sold in America does not meet the standards for like the average water department. <laughs> God damn. For like human consumption. Out of a sink? Yes. Cause I guess the FDA standards are lower. No surprise. They get paid. Yeah. So like people drink tap water and they're like, Oh, it tastes like, it tastes like chlorine or like some other shit like that. I mean, but it's like heavily regulated and shit like yeah. that. Which I mean, I, I have lived in places where you weren't, they were like, do not drink the tap water. It's not good. Yeah. Like I lived in new, sure. one place in New Mexico. You couldn't drink the fucking water. Shit. That's how I was when I lived in Fairbanks, Alaska. Yeah. Like, like that shit would stain your tub red. They were like, yo, like, Jesus. do not drink this shit. Like it's, ugh. and you would think Alaska would have clean water, <clears throat> but Anchorage, not. Anchorage where I was at, there's, there was a whole scandal like in that area uh, with like a, sanitation department they were like illegally dumping shit <laughs> and then i guess it kind of it basically pulled like a flint michigan yeah yeah. like it kind of like bled into like water lines but there's just wow. not a lot of people there so it's technically north pole alaska but there's just not a lot of people there so like no one ever fucking heard about it the media was like yeah we're gonna pass you know that shit over. in flint is still <laughs> fucked up oh yeah yeah they haven't done nothing about it dude fuck that man. and you want to talk about from like an environmental deal like all those plastic fucking bottles of water dude that's terrible for the goddamn environment mm -hmm. like yeah, dude. Like, um, <clears throat> I mean, you see those pictures of like those fucking seas of trash outside of like yeah. India and Africa and shit, you know? That's why like I have Ugh. a one gallon jug and I just re it's a fucking milk container and I just mm -hmm. refill it with fucking water out of the sink. And that's what I drink every day. Like, yeah, I don't fucking I don't drink bottled water. I don't buy it also because I'm a cheap ass. I'm not going to spend money on water when it comes out of the fucking tap. <laughs> so that's what I do. Like in my truck, I've got half gallon bottle like jugs and i just refill them with water all the time no i don't pay for that shit i don't know man like i i use the same bottle like several times over or whatever yeah. like i don't know and it's just like fucking expensive like the markup is like Dude, that's what i was reading about like, water out of the scam. tap you get one thousand gallons of water for five fucking dollars where we live jeez i didn't realize it was like that i mean yeah. i know my water bill is like super low it's always like 20 something dollars or yeah whatever, it's but... one thousand gallons of water is five dollars <laughs> 
Yeah, and you versus go versus a fucking bottle like one liter is ninety nine cents or a dollar twenty nine or whatever. Two twenty nine. Two twenty nine. Yeah, Aquafina. God damn, that's what I tell my Amateurs. kids. I'm like, water is the most like. Do not buy a bottle of fucking water. It's a rip off. It's one liter. Yeah, one liter. Yeah, man. So they for are. Half <laughs> just, if you just spend than... double that, you can get <laughs> nine hundred ninety seven gal like nine hundred ninety nine more gallons of fucking water. <laughs> oh man. Dude, yeah. And that, that was like a big scam that I was reading about it too, was like the markup. You know, <clears throat> it's uh it's just insane. Man. Well, dude, we've been overseas. What like in Europe, water is more expensive than fucking beer. Oh yeah, that was that was a thing. That was that was weird. why I always drank beer because it was cheaper to get fucking beer than to buy a goddamn bottle of water. It'd be like and the bottle of water <laughs> was smaller than the fucking pint or pitcher <laughs> yeah. of beer you could get. It'd be like two dollars for this beer or what I mean there was there's places I went, like it was like two euro for like like a pint of beer or whatever and then it would be like oh if you wanted like water it'd be like oh that's gonna be four or five yeah yeah literally like what? double the fucking cost for water <laughs> what? versus just alcohol like. dude i could never figure it out because i'm like thinking in my head like you know beer has a fermentation process like they have to you know what i mean like yeah and it's just like water is just like i mean yeah you got to filter it all but you have to do that with beer anyway like that water has to be filtered prior mm-hmm. so what the fuck there's more steps in it, it should cost more that's the way i see it but. yeah it makes no sense there's probably some other sh- i don't know <clears throat> I guess they just mass produce a shit ton of it. I guess, but I mean, it's not they mass produce fucking water too. Well, because like, you you went to like where I was at in Germany at one point. Like, yeah. uh, did you ever drive past the Bitburger like brewery? Um, did you ever go out there? No, I don't know. Yeah, well, if you drove, uh, just drove oh, fucking. <laughs> if you drove, uh, if you drove like behind the back of it, dude, like they just had like pallets and pallets. I mean, just sky high stacked full of fucking beer, man. Like it was, oh, yeah. it, it was in, I've never seen that much beer in my entire life. And it was just dude. a revolving door of like yes. truck shipping and yes. coming back. Reloading. Like I'm not even, I'm not even like fucking with it. I mean, you know how much an average pallet, like yeah, like the height of it, you know, chest high or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're probably looking at like easily 10 or 12 high. God damn, they stack them yeah. motherfuckers that high. They have different types of pallets. Like they're all structured different. So you can stack them up. Like, oh, like, okay, like okay. But yeah, dude, like Fine. I was just like, what the fuck, man? And then like, <laughs> and that was just the bottles. Then they had all the kegs and everything yeah, yeah. too, man. So <laughs> they were fucking cranking it out. <laughs> yeah, I had a keg of that shit in my house at one point. God, that shit tastes like dog shit, dude. Yeah, that was like the cheap, like yeah. That's probably why it was two fucking bucks. That was like the goddamn <laughs> Keystone of America, or like <clears throat> Germany, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they called it a pilsner, but it had like a pinch to it, dude. It was like, woo. You know? But it was it had a pretty high alcohol content, didn't it? If I remember yeah. right. Yeah, it was like I mean. You know, it wasn't like your typical 4.2. I think it was like somewhere around like six or so. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that's typically, that's why I would get it over there or coming <laughs> in an airport, yeah. like especially before or coming out after deployment, you would fucking slam as many of those you could, get sick, go to the plane ride. Dude, like. we had a we had a Christmas party, right? Like, I mean, every year mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, like office Christmas party yeah. or whatnot. And, you know, I think we had, we sold tickets and everything. I think we had like roughly 150 to 200 people showed up, right? Mm-hmm. And we had two kegs of Bitburger. So we floated one, yeah. like straight up. And then the other one was like barely tapped. And <clears throat> I knew the guy who had to get him and all this stuff and had to re- return him. He was like, yeah, I'm going to take these back in the morning. And I was like, the hell you are. Yeah, that one ain't fucking finished. <laughs> dude, I rolled that shit in the back of my car. <laughs> and that dude was so heavy. <laughs> it's like you can see like my car like. Kegs, Squat. <laughs> yeah, kegs are heavy, man. You can see Fuck like yeah. there was a dip to that shit when, that, when they <laughs> dropped that shit in there. And then uh, I drove that shit to my fucking house, dude. And I loaded that shit on my bottom floor where it was like cold as hell. And uh-huh. I set it on the tile. And dude, I just fucking drank that shit. for. I was like, I'll give it to you in one week, dude. Yeah. Because he was like, he's like, I had to have it by the end of the week. I had to turn back in or mm-hmm. some shit. And I was like, okay. I was like, I'll give it to you in like one week. <laughs> and I, I tried to like float it on my own. I couldn't do it. I started like inviting people over, dude. And it, it was like that movie Beer Fest when they're like, okay, we're going to start training for the oh, Beer yeah, Olympics. Yeah. And they're like, we're going to float this keg. And then they just get like super fucked up. And the next morning they're trying to check it. And it's like, there's a fuckload. There's <laughs> still a fuckload, dude. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, dude, I was like, because <sighs> I started calculating. I was like, oh, there's like, you know, roughly 200 beers in here. Like, this ain't, yeah. like, this ain't going to be that bad. Like, I can, I can get through this. And, you know, <clears throat> really just go hard. I think I took like I took vacation time. Like, I was like, I was like I'm gonna fucking do this. I'm fucking committed to this <laughs> yeah, shit. Dude, I'm gonna fucking do this. I could <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. I could not do it. Oh, dude, <laughs> Germany was fucking weird, man. It, I mean, it was cool. Like, I mean, there's like just odd things that like happen or whatever, you know. But uh, I did. I will tell you this story. Did I ever tell you about the fucking kid who found a goddamn dungeon in his house? Oh shit! Like, I'm not I'm not talking like a sex dungeon or anything like that. I'm talking about like a old old like, like tortures like yeah early, huh? early 20th century like torture dungeon in his house dude that he was renting this is a hundred percent true story so like ladies and gentlemen listening you know 
we do not make up stories on this podcast. Not on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Watch our shorts. Uh, you know, that seems to be garnering some attention in that area. But uh, yeah, we so we don't make up. We don't make up stories on this podcast. These are all true stories that like Moses and I have experienced. You know, or like seen. You know, other people go through or Dealt whatever. With. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, dude, like uh, this guy I worked with in Germany, um, because, you know, the houses in Germany, they're just big as fuck. Yeah. I mean, like my house was three stories. I've never lived in a house that size. And I think I paid like sixteen hundred a month for it Mm -hmm. or some shit. Like it was it was a reasonable price, dude. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's just and they're old houses, man. You know, a lot, a lot of these like the basic like structure of them. I mean, they'll date back to like World War Two era. And oh, stuff, yeah. Dude. And like my, like my house in England had fucking concrete walls. Yeah. Mine like, in Germany. Yeah that, yeah. that was very common. Like them, them things are built to last. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's one thing I did like about over there. Like there was none of this like bullshit drywall. No. Like it was a pain in the ass trying to hang pictures on the motherfucker. Though. <laughs> yeah. I was chipping the fucking concrete off. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Why, why is this not going through? <laughs> Yeah, dude. So uh, this dude is like, you know, kind of like digging around his house or whatever. And I can't remember where it was. At. It was on. It was like a subfloor. Uh-huh. And he like there was like some shit in the way. Anyway, he ended up finding a, basically like this door that was like hidden. Right. And he like pries it open. He gets in there. He's like, what the fuck is this, man? He's like digging in there, digging in there, digging in there. And he goes in there and then brings in like he's like, it's a room. It's dark as fuck. It's musty as hell. Yeah. And then he goes and gets a flashlight and he looks in there and there's like a concrete like altar, basically a stone altar. And there's literally like chains and like old school iron shackles. Oh, fuck. Like where people were like chained and shackled in there. He said it looked like some sacrificial shit or something. He's God like, he damn. did not fucking. He was like, he got freaked the fuck out. So he fucking booked it out of that house <clears throat> quicker than shit because he'd been saying the house was like fucking haunted. He's like, dude, he's like, I hear voices in my house all the time and shit. And I was like, eh, whatever, dude. Like, yeah. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, if, if that happened and I found that shit, I'd be like, that explains everything. I'm not crazy. I'm getting the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> he did, dude. He booked it. He got a fucking hotel. And then he went and he, like, talked to his landlord. And then he, you know, worked it out, like, contract. They didn't charge him any extra money. They just let him, they let him out of the lease. I'd be like, dude, I have a goddamn dungeon in this house. <laughs> fuck you. I am out of here. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. So, like, I don't know. Like, that Man. shit would keep me up. Like, dude, there's no I, way I could stay in that house. <sighs> I would just, I would like to know, like, the what story. the fuck went on in there. Yeah. Who fucking knows, man? Like, I wonder, like, if it was, like, if it was sacrificial shit, like, or who knows what else it was used for. Like, I mean, who knows, who knows how old that house is? I mean, that yeah. could have been, like, a makeshift fucking jail. Like, that could have, yeah, you know or, like, I mean? that could have been there and there was a house built, like, after that even. Like, it was, at, like, added mm-hmm. on or some shit. Who fucking knows? Yeah, man. That's fucking crazy shit, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. That's yeah. cool. Like, I've been listening to a bunch of, like, podcasts basically of like Uh people that tell stories and you would be surprised at how many people like nothing that fucking insane but like other people living like they'll move into a new house and they'll be like a goddamn method living in their attic or some shit or they'll it's called frogging dude dude it's fucking (laughs) crazy or like another one like it was a bunch of like just weird shit but people will be like living inside of the walls and stuff yeah and they'll be asleep and they'll get woken up at night and they think it's like to some like footsteps or like movement I think it's like a raccoon got back in there or something, but then they'll fucking eventually find it out, and it's a goddamn human back there yeah. living in like pissing in jugs. And I stuff. think I saw something. I think it was in Japan, dude. There was like a woman that was living in this family's house for like seven years. Fuck. And she like lived like up in the attic, and she would like just come down like when they were gone or like when yeah, they go to sleep. Night. She would like eat and stuff, and eventually they started noticing like weird shit, so they put up cameras or whatever, and they, <laughs> they caught her on camera, dude. And, but yeah, it's a it's a term. It's called frogging. That's a weird like pH. name for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's more so that's the actual trend of frogging. Like you remember when like owling and planking like were yeah, a fucking yeah. thing. So this is, I guess, I don't know. Like, dude, that's like on a whole totally <laughs> different level yeah. on that shit. But it's more for like frat houses and like shit like that, where there's like ten people that live in this house. Oh, okay. So it's like can okay. you go there and just like and just kind of move, just like start just living there, start without... living on the couch or okay. whatever. So that's more what it's for. But okay, I guess universally it's used for fucking weirdos that live in your house dude, dude like meth heads crawling into your attic and shit yeah that's a good way to get fucking shot you know that shit does not happen in texas dude fuck no dude dude you just blast their ass dude yeah <laughs> and if they were i mean like i would just never tell anyone about it either like yeah man obviously no one knows they're up there so no one's gonna know they're gone be like no i live in this house i never knew anyone by that name <laughs> oh speaking of uh japan i do have kind of a funny story something that happened um i think it's funny i mean 
<laughs> uh, I'll, I'll let the viewers and yourself okay. judge. <laughs> so you know how we have this um, <clears throat> Japanese restaurant in our town, a little hibachi restaurant? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's ran by like legitimate Japanese family and mm -hmm. stuff, right? And uh, I mean like accents, fluent Japanese. Like from Japan. Straight off the boat. Yeah, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and they're good people. Like they're good. They're like members of the community. Like, oh yeah, that, that place has been around for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have great food. Have you ever eaten they, there? Yeah, it's good. Oh, I love that shit, It's man. actually, it's the best fucking like food like that in town yeah the other place it's horrible yeah <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> but uh we went to the other place man um it's not as authentic yeah like my wife got a glass of wine and then when they brought it out this is like right at the beginning of covid by the way when they brought it out it had like lipstick stain oh. on the glass and i was just like uh dude never been back to that place but this other place we're talking about is a good place <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so i didn't fucking think about it uh, but I, I go in there. I go in there often. Like I usually pick up to go orders or whatever. Cause I don't really like sitting around people like that too yeah. much. So I usually get to go orders You've or seen whatever. The goddamn onion volcano. You're dead. <sighs> I've seen this 50 times. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Read his name. Derek. <laughs> like, I've seen, like I'm sure your name is Derek. You know? <laughs> but I've seen this 50 times. But uh, so I usually get it to go order or whatever. But like the people there recognize me cause I come in there like so frequently mm -hmm. or whatever. And um, so I'm talking to this guy that works there uh you know casually known this guy for a couple years now i guess and uh he's like hey man like how you been like what you been up to like all this other stuff and everything and uh you know i was like talking to him and i was like man and it was around the time i'm gonna go see that movie oppenheimer <laughs> <laughs> right? and i was like i was like yeah i was like it was a great movie i was like did you see it and as soon as those words left my mouth you know when you say something fucking stupid and you're just like, and can I grab that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, have you seen the movie Oppenheimer? And then he just looks at me and is just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was like, oh shit. That's when I realized I was like, oh fuck, this is like a fucking movie about us bombing Japan. Yeah. Right. And then Isn't uh, it banned in Japan? Yeah. I found <laughs> that out after the fact too. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> It was, I mean, he was cool about it, but it, it was funny because I'd never seen that dude be like really stern. Like he was just like, no. like total demeanor change. Yeah, like, um, yeah. no, he, I ain't seen that shit. Yeah, man. Usually like, God, oh, they're always so happy, smiling yeah. and shit, you know, but like, he was he just instantly like, no. just shit on his butt. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, hell no, dude. We're not. <laughs> You're like, no, I don't oh, really care God. to watch the genocide of my own people. Like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like such an asshole too or whatever. <laughs> It's cool. That would have yeah. been funny if he was like, oh, no, I was actually watching Pearl Harbor instead. <laughs> <laughs> now my grandfather told me all about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just goes on. Look at this shit. That would have been a good comeback. That would. That would like, fuck, dude. <laughs> oh, man. But I got to tell you, man, like, um, one thing I've noticed, like, about that place, like, the girls who work there, right, or the, the women, right, uh, they're actually, like, really pretty, like, naturally pretty or whatever. Yeah. Um, they don't wear makeup. That's one thing I've noticed or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because like I don't know what I don't know what's going on, like where we're at or whatever. This is the whole reason I bring this up. Um, excessive makeup seems to be like a thing or whatever. Like you remember when you were like in England and stuff. And dude, you, England is the I think England is the worst. Yeah. Like. Yeah, dude. And like when I was over there. As I, far as like just caked fucking makeup on dude like, like that, that's a whole look. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a whole like they have a name for it. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I just call it disgusting. Stupid. But, <laughs> like, is that the fucking name no, for dude, it? They, there's like a whole fucking thing, but it's like if you were to just run your fingernail on it, it would just like, it'd be like if you if you did that in a wax museum, it just peel. Right that would off. be the same thing, just dude. It was like right just <laughs> yeah. a fucking so, layer of greasy bullshit. How do they think that shit is so fucking good looking, dude? Like, like I mean, have I, you seen them without makeup? So I mean, I, I don't know, man. Call me a fucking old school dude, man. But I'd rather take like I don't mind like a little bit of makeup. I really don't, man. Like no, whatever. not no. Like a moderate amount, like cool, like you know, eyeliner, put on some base, whatever the fuck you want to do, sure. Uh, but I mean, I'm talking about the motherfuckers who are like orange, like Donald Trump. Okay. And they have lashes that are like six inches fucking long. You know what I mean? Like they're almost like not even human at this point. You know? <laughs> nope. They're like, dude, well, fucking wax museum shit. Yeah, dude. But, okay. Have they you look, they look like a wax <laughs> museum. Have thing. you seen the fucking? There was a. It was a while ago, but it was like a um, montage of porn stars with and without makeup, dude. Oh, those chicks are ugly as fuck. Yeah, a lot of them are. Yeah. Like, like night and day difference. Yeah, dude. like unrecognizable. And there, but there's also <clears throat> like other trends now, like that you were mentioning it. There's like women that will show their before face and then they'll put like spend like three hours doing makeup and they're totally unrecognizable. Yeah. 
like, that's why if you take a chick out first date go to the pool <laughs> go you sit, see the body and the makeup go walk. sit in like, a sauna yeah dude <laughs> no I'm just like, like, God, be like a out. dripping clown like <laughs> oh, what's going on there? let me wipe that off for you oh. woo, 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 woo. but like my thing is like i don't i don't know what dude but like i remember like i remember being in england like it was really bad in england yeah uh germany it had some of it in germany it wasn't nearly as bad but like england the uk in general for whatever fucking reason man but like i see like a lot of these like girls and stuff like i don't know coming up on like facebook i, I don't know like they just like, it seems to be coming like a more and more of like a thing to do the excessive makeup or whatever and i'm just like ah, i don't ugh, i don't know man like i don't, I don't like that shit man because like uh, yeah well and this is gonna make me sound like a fucking dick but here you go whatever here's, <laughs> here's one for you <laughs> you know so you know, like typically, like someone who like trans like transitions, like a transgender, right? Yeah. Say so, like you know, guy to girl or whatever, right? Um, what do they, what do they do? They wear excessive makeup like that to hide the masculine features. Yes. Yeah. So now, like when I see like a normal chick, right? <laughs> like a regular, like cisgender, whatever the hell you want to call it, without a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh, but when I see, yeah, I, uh, I can't say that. <laughs> so, like. Uh, um, but when I see that excessive makeup, like immediately my mind, it just like snaps. You're like, like it questioning. Goes, it goes to transgender. Yeah. Like straight up. And I think that's starting to become like a fucking thing, dude. I think people are like catching oh, on. Like, what's going on? Like, here, wait, yeah. I need to look at you better. Like, yeah. Like, what's going on? Hold a Donald up? Trump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. They, uh, they, uh, I don't know. That's, that's just not a thing. I mean, and then you get the shit like where you like, if you like, give them a hug or something, then like you look at your shirt, and it's just like smeared. How many times does that happen to you? Oh in your yeah. Life? And you're just like, oh god. You, you you're wearing like a black silk <laughs> shirt, and they just have like a perfect face imprint on you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Got to get these girls reality check, man. Nat <laughs> natural beauty. <laughs> natural beauty. Well, like I mean, speaking of like natural beauty and stuff, man. Like um, my uh, like so like my first. My first like crush, like so when I was a child, my first like adult crush, mm -hmm. okay, was essentially. You talking about like when you're like, fourteen, fifteen, or uh, younger than that, man? Okay, I'm talking like like puberty hit. Not even. Okay. Like wouldn't know what to do with it if I had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, like still using bunk beds and shit. You okay. Know? Like you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> so my my I, I gotta give a little bit of background story before I tell this, but basically my first like crush was like basically the entire Dallas Cowboys cheerleading team. You weren't picked. I wasn't picked. I was, I'll take I'll, just, I'll take what I can get. Yeah, yeah. I'm like eight years old or some <laughs> shit, you know. And uh, so my grandfather, he was just like an old school guy or whatever. He died when I was I was I was relatively young, but um, uh, I wasn't even a teenager when he passed away. Um, but he uh, he he was just one of those dudes like he he subscribed to Playboy, mm -hmm. right? And he would like legit like read like the news articles in him and shit like that. And keep... I, have you ever actually read like a Playboy? Yeah, it's a lot like, of funny shit in it's there. It's funny shit. It's and interesting. It's like, like holy shit. Okay. Playboy itself is really not that like raunchy, like especially in today's standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Maxim was the one that had the full pussy spreads and stuff. Yeah, like Hustler was it? Hustler, Hustler. That's what I said. Yeah. Hustler was the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, that was old Larry Flint, dude. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> that dude did not give a fuck. But yeah, man, Playboy was like relatively tame. It just got mm -hmm. the fucking rep. It was like solo chicks and it was just yeah. like steals and it was just like no like hardcore shit or no. whatever. So my grandfather, he like had this collection or whatever. And he described like, I think they did like monthly yep. editions, right? Mm -hmm. And he'd been doing it for like a long time or whatever. And uh, and it was kind of funny. He had like a like a side table like next to like his recliner and he would have him like in there or whatever, like, kind of tucked away <laughs> like or whatever. Jammed in there yeah. <laughs> and so like anytime we go visit him, like I knew they were there. Yeah. And my mom would just be like, get away from there. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like I'm trying to take it. Not with a six foot radius. Yeah. <laughs> and as I'm getting like a little older, like, you know what I mean? Like just a little bit, like uh, my grandfather's like making jokes and stuff to my mom. Like, hey, like, you know, when he turns like 13 or whatever, like I'm going to get him a subscription. Yeah. You know, which would have been fucking awesome. dude. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been awesome dude, taking that shit to school. Like, go check this shit out. I'm the king. <laughs> yeah. But he actually, uh, interesting note, he actually had them. Uh, I had a collection of them, like all of them, basically, and they were all in like pristine condition. Like a lot of them, he never oh, even that's actually. Fucking cool. Yeah, a lot of them he never even actually read. Uh, he just had them or whatever. Like they'd just come in or whatnot. And um, after he passed away, a few years ago, man. After that, because my parents decided to get religious for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, they threw all of them away. Those motherfuckers, man. You know how much some of those are worth now, dude. Man? I can it's only imagine. Insane, yeah. Dude. Insane. Any of that vent, like vintage stuff, mm -hmm. still in the fucking plastic wrap, dude. That would be 
crazy amounts yeah. of money. I remember seeing, I think it was, I think it was the year 2000, like Pamela Anderson. It was all black one, like fucking where she's like on the front of it or whatever. Pristine condition and stuff. I can't remember how much Damn. that one sells for. But I mean, but some of these are like easily, like if they're like perfect condition, they're easily fetching like a hundred bucks. Easily. Oh yeah. Easy, easy. And he had like hundreds Stacks of, of them. them. Yes. <laughs> And so they threw him out or whatever, which I don't know. I'm kind of still a little salty about that. Like, it would have been cool to inherit that. Yeah. And one of those like, oh, it's my grandfather's Playboy. <laughs> so it's like fucking 10 boxes high or whatever. But uh, so anyway, like, but he would always like make jokes or whatever. Like, I think he was just trying to instill in like his grandson's like you're attracted to women. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, part yeah. to make sure you didn't turn out gay. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, I think that's what it was, but he wasn't like saying it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But like, he he would always like make jokes. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Anytime we were like out, he'd be like, oh, like, what do you think about her or whatever? I'm like eight years old. I'd be like, oh, she's real pretty, baby. He'd be like, like yeah. yeah, she is. <laughs> yeah. But he would never get like raunchy with it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But, but he would, uh, he would, he would do pretty, pretty good with that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so I was kind of like, was like all oh, these Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders are fuck, like fucking hot as hell, dude. And uh, this is back when everyone liked the Cowboys, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, Top of the world. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he bought me a Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders poster. Mm -hmm. They just had the traditional like shot of like just all of all them of like them. lined yeah, up yeah. or whatever, right? And it like set at the foot of my bed, right? I'm not even old enough to know what jerking off is, but if I could have whacked it <laughs> at that point in my life, I probably would have been doing that every fucking <laughs> night, you know? So. <laughs> Anyway, so some time goes on or whatever, and um, I have to go to the doctor, just like some routine shit or whatever, and a uh, general practitioner or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, my doctor is kind of got the same sense of humor as my grandpa, and then like he knows our family really well uh, or knew. And uh, <laughs> so he would make jokes too, like what, like just about like a young boy, like thinking someone's cute or something yeah, like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you got a girlfriend? Oh, what does yeah. she look like? Oh, she pretty? Oh, oh, there you go, right? You know? And uh, which I think now most people see that shit as creepy or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't mean that, I, don't, I didn't give a fuck. I thought it was funny. Yeah. But um, anyway, my mom like told him this story. Like, hey, like, you know, he's like in love with the Dallas Cowboy truth. Like all of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and she was just like, you know, he, you know, his grandfather got him a poster of him. And it, you know, sits on his wall by his bed, and a doctor goes, "Oh, my daughter's one of those." <laughs> <laughs> and dude, I my fucking, who dude, my fucking ears perked up. I was like, ding, 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 ding. Like, <laughs> like, you got any pictures of her? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he gave me her name uh, and stuff. And sure as shit, I went back because the poster had the names of the girls. Oh, okay, like under, yeah. like it'd be like number whatever. You know, they yeah, would like, yeah. have them like lined up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I looked it up, and sure as shit, that was his daughter. Yeah, and she was fucking banging, dude. <laughs> banging. I'm talking super smooth. After that, high. you're like, okay, you are now my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it literally became this I'm, thing. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting, we're getting here. <laughs> so, um, so fast forward, right? Her dad's obviously a doctor, a medical doctor. He's getting close to retiring. Mm -hmm. Okay, she is now, as of today, a medical doctor in our town and has taken over his practice. Oh, fuck. Yes. And I've been trying to change doctors yeah. <laughs> for like weeks, dude. Nah, nah I, I need to change a doctor. And I actually thought about going with her, like just using, because I mean, like, because her dad was like a phenomenal dog. He was a yeah. great, and I'm sure like very similar. I hear, I hear great things about her actually, but I thought about telling her that story, dude. You're like, you know, I used to have a poster <laughs> of you when I was eight years old. You were my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my God, man. Yeah, they, uh, Dude, yeah, too bad you don't be... have that poster. You could totally you get her to sign that shit. <laughs> get her to sign it. That'd yeah. be good. I might fucking have it somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, dude. That was back when it was acceptable to have posters of women on walls yeah, yeah. and shit like that. God damn it, what happened, dude? What happened? Like that Miller Light bullshit where they're like, send in your old shit or whatever and we'll fucking destroy oh, it. Yeah. And, you know, and it's just like, what are you doing, man? What are you yeah, I watch you do know only fans in porn are like flooding out of everything constantly like you're not gonna get rid of that shit <laughs> that's that's my thing is like there's a huge hypocrisy with it dude it's you like know? people care about that but then those the same women that are bitching about it will have a fucking only fans and yeah. suck dick on tv for two dollars a month like yeah dude makes no fucking sense yeah 
And it's just, I don't know, it's just like total, total double standard with that shit, man. I don't know. Remember when Only, OnlyFans trying to shut down porn? Yeah, and then they were like, <laughs> everyone stopped using it, and they were like, nah, just kidding, we're going to have porn again. Like, and instantly overnight, everyone was like, nah. Yeah. Nah, we're good. Yeah, because we're that's good. the only reason people watch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever actually gotten on there and, like, looked into it or anything? I got on there because I was going to try to get on there. What? Wait, what? What? So before, like you were going to be a performer. Yeah. Yeah. Before I was uh, in a relationship, I'll, I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll say that <laughs> clear this up before I met my current wife. <laughs> All right. That was, that was the plan was that I was going to look into that. Holy shit, dude. You just talking about like solo, just jacking it in front of cam. Well, you, you want to know what my fucking thing was going to be? I don't, I don't know. Do I want to know? <laughs> I'm yeah. kind of fucking scared. Right so now. like I, it's probably been done, but like I think I had carved out a pretty good niche. So I was gonna, I was gonna. You got to be original. You do. Got to be a maverick. Got to have something cool that people want to pay to see, and especially being a dude. Like I don't have big titties, so people want. I got, I got to have a fucking gimmick. Yeah. So, anyways, my thing was I was gonna order food from nice restaurants and then jerk off onto it. What? So like I would like <laughs> have like the meal like all looking on a nice plate and stuff, and then what I would the just, fuck? and then I would just come on the food. Why the fuck did I agree to this podcast? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I was going to do with it afterward, but pro- potentially if I could have got someone else, I could pay, like, cut them in on it and have them eat it or something. Uh, uh, that's but, it, uh, dude. You're going to hit my... <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it, man. I got a weak stomach. You know this shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. That was that was going to be my... Uh, that was my plan. Oh, fuck. Is this hour almost up yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just counting down the time to get off. <laughs> go the fuck, I, can I, go got, puke. I gotta go throw up. <laughs> I, re- I really, I, I don't know where that weak stomach comes from, man. But I, I like, I really do have just a weak, weak stomach. But like, I'm one of those dudes. Like, I can drink. I mean, you, I mean, you've seen it. Like, I mean, I don't drink that much because I don't want to be like sick as fuck or like really hungover the next day. But yeah, I mean, yeah. if I wanted to, I can crush like 20 beers easy, right? But like, the thing is, like, I will throw up from. Like a drinking excessively oh, okay. like that, I will throw it. But I'm one of those dudes. Like once it's out, then like literally like a minute or two later, I'm just I'm back to like cool. Like let's have fun and like, yeah. dude, people have observed it. They're like, this is weird, man. Like <laughs> <laughs> like where most people are just like done for the night yeah. or whatever. Like they they like incoherent and shit. Like I don't know. I don't know what the hell it is. I like to think that I'm puke and rally. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, well, my ancestors are from Scotland, right? And there's this whole like history in Scotland. I don't know how true this is. I actually saw this in a meme. I want to believe this is true. <laughs> um, but apparently the Scottish discovered whiskey, right? Mm-hmm. Like as we know it today, right? And, Seems uh, like it checks out. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a thing in their history because the Scots actually invented like a lot of shit. Uh-huh. A lot of shit. And um, that like Western culture, like, you know. Adopted. Ba- yeah, basically like, you know, built <laughs> the world that we see today. And um, a lot of really intelligent, like, mathematicians and stuff like that and scientists have come out of Scotland or whatever, like, just historically. Mm-hmm. But apparently when they discovered whiskey, <laughs> uh, it has, like, if you look at their timeline, I guess you can find it on Wikipedia or whatever. I think that's what the memes said. Like, it shows, like, all this shit that they, like, had achieved and they discovered. And then it's, like, whiskey. And then there's, like, a 300-year period where they don't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then they pick it back up or whatever. <laughs> so they went on a 300-year bender. <laughs> yes. And then finally somebody was like, all right, look, we got to we gotta get our fucking shit straight again. We got to start doing stuff. We got to get our shit back together. <laughs> they were like, we should be on fucking top. And now we can't even get up in the goddamn morning. England's down there talking shit. I think that's what it was, actually. I think England just started talking You're shit. Like, they were like, hey, pussy. <laughs> get these fucking guys out of here <laughs> oh <damn>. shit <laughs> dude yeah man it's a apparently it's a fucking true story though apparently i, I don't know i need to look into it because that, that's a pretty damn good story if that's true man yeah we're, good fact i guess yeah you know? you know i don't know but you have like a really high tolerance too don't you i well okay i have a really like i can drink like there's no tomorrow well okay not anymore because i don't i drink like one day a week very very yeah. minimal amounts yeah. but in my fucking heyday my prime yeah. When I was <laughs> back younger and respond like doing my fucking drinking shit, yeah, I would take like I could I could drink a fuckload, but I would black out every time. Really, but I would just be <clears throat> continually fucking drinking the whole time too. Yeah. So like I would every got like in Korea every goddamn night I would be like, what the fuck happened last night? And I have like all Jesus like I would have to man. have people tell me what I fucking did. That's why I don't drink liquor at all yeah like, yeah I, I just light beers man i try to keep it like pretty casual or whatever like 
even in like one sitting, it's like, you know, have like a handful and it's like, eh, all right, we're getting too far. Like time to fucking back off or whatever. Yeah. You know? Like vodka so. is my fucking drink of choice, but <clears> I only like, I'll, like I said, I drink one day a week. I'll typically pour like four to five shots in a cup, toss a little juice in there, just enough to just color it a little bit yeah. and then sip on that. And whenever that's gone, then I just swap back and start drinking water again. Yeah. Cause like now if I do drink a lot, I get sick as fuck. Like ha- the hangovers yeah. are real. Whereas used to, I didn't get no goddamn hangover. <laughs> Don't you miss I those thought, days? Hell yeah. I was like, dude, I was like, whoever like, who gets a fucking hangover, you're a fucking pussy. Pussy. <laughs> now I'm that pussy. I can't yeah. do that shit anymore. Dude, I always heard it, man. Like everyone was like, Hey, like once you turn 30, like it's going to change. Dude. Yeah. And I was, yeah. Like, and I was like, man, that's dude. a bullshit. I'll out drink any motherfucker. Around that here. was uh, back when I was ironically drinking whiskey. Yes. <laughs> <So> <laughs> like, you know, I used to just drink Jameson. Like, fucking water dude yeah but yeah any like scotch all that stuff man like yeah mine well mine and was and still is fucking the cheapest bottom of the barrel rock gut yeah, vodka i know that that's disgusting that's my shit man you can if run it, your car on the that closer shit. the rubbing alcohol the better for me <laughs> dude i can't even smell that shit now dude no like instant oh, nope no no oh dude you know what i was thinking we should do man i think we should uh do a sober october what do you think not that we you i mean we don't like, use a lot of shit anyway but i mean like me, you, and the boys and shit, and we'd just be like, all right, none of us drink or do anything. Good Fortune luck on getting everybody we know to do that shit. <laughs> because of fucking alcoholics that are yeah, our friends, yeah. dude. It's like, guys, you can't stop smoking weed to save their life, you know? They'd be like, you want me to what? Like, uh, what the fuck for? <laughs> Come on, I thought it'd be good, guys. I thought we could just all support each other and, you know, we'd really just get along and do it really well, man. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds good on paper, right? Sounds good. You know, I think, because uh, you know how, like, Joe Rogan and, like, his homies, like, they all do all that shit, right? Like, yeah. every October, and they get burdened on it. Dude, I, I, I just don't see it, man. Like, the amount that he drinks and shit, I was like, dude, that dude has... The first two weeks would be withdrawals. Like, yeah. He like, would be, for like, sure. Like, all... it would be like, you need to be in a hospital, dude. Yeah. Like, all you would have to do to tell if he was lying is just do a podcast with him and watch him. If he's not fucking shaking, <laughs> then he's lying. Like, you know, like, if he's not fucking visibly goddamn liquor shakes, that yeah. he's still drinking. Yeah, dude. Because I remember, like... I was listening to like some clip or whatever, and it was like Joe, Tom Segura, and like Bert or whatever. They mm-hmm. were all there, and Tom like was telling Bert like, "Yeah, tell Joe like how much you drink or whatever." And he was like, "Well, well, you don't have like nine or ten a day." And Joe Rogan was like, "Jesus Christ, man, nine or ten a day, or whatever, like cocktails, like mixed drinks or yeah, whatever." Yeah. And uh, and then Tom Segura was just laughing his ass off, and he was like telling the rest of the story. And then <laughs> Joe was like, what? He was like, and then Tom just busted it out. He was like, they're doubles. <laughs> so it's like a whole bottle of like yeah. liquor a fucking day, dude. Like, God, dude, how can you do that, man? I, I, I don't, I don't even see it, man. <laughs> I don't see it. I, I, I think he's lying. I, I don't think they, I don't even know if they, they, they even know about it. You know what I mean? I think he's just like, man. he's probably just guessing. Yeah, he's probably like, yeah, he's probably like sober for the podcast and all that shit and everything. And like, all right, cool, 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 cool. And yeah. then like he just goes home, he's like, Jesus fucking Christ. And like he slams half a glass of fucking vodka and then goes and screams about being the machine or something. And, <laughs> you know, mean, that movie flopped in theaters. I mean, no surprise. Everyone's already heard mm-hmm. that goddamn story anyways, and no one cares anymore. Dude, I don't know. Why am I so hung up on Burt Kreischer right now? <laughs> I just don't like him, dude. I don't know. <laughs> There's it's not just one thing. There's so many things, and I can rant. And I think a lot of people are like kind of feel the same well, way. I mean like I will say this the first time whenever he was just starting out and I heard that machine story he like that shit was funny as fuck hilarious the that first means- time the first like okay two times whatever because the shit went viral dude I remember watching yeah, it, like, like my cousin sent it to me I, laughed my, I mean that's, that was a funny ass good story yeah but that story's like over oh, a decade old yeah dude you know and then so now he's revisited it made a movie where apparently it's like a, some sequel to Dunnest, that story like he has a stand up special about it yeah like and I was reading on a uh, Wikipedia, the budget for that movie was $20 million. Really? And it only made 10.7 theaters. Ooh, fuck. That's not a lot of money, dude. No. That's not a lot of money, dude. But then a part of me was like, yes. So, uh, <laughs> safe to say he ain't going to be making another fucking movie anytime soon. Yeah. Well, because like my thing is like, I want my, like I want comedy to be good, man. And like, I know, I know we do like a podcast. So it's mostly just us like talking and shit. Like we're not doing stand up. I'm talking about like stand up comedy. Like I want that shit to be good. Yeah. And so, and I know, like, comedy is subjective. Sure. But. Yeah. It's I pretty mean, subjective until you read the comment sections of anything that Burt posts. Yeah, yeah. And then everyone's like, this guy's going to fucking die. <laughs> like, he's not going to be here in five years. And they're like, Jesus Christ, he's having liver, liver Which failure. Which I mean, like, he has to have some sort of a fan base. Otherwise, like, his shit, like, people would not be listening to it. Well, I guess maybe. 
He's still selling tickets, dude. Yeah, so I mean, there has to be some people that are still liking the motherfucker. Yeah. I think it's more of like high school kids. That's I mean, that's probably who he has to pander to now. Like, oh, he was so drunk. That's so cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, nah, dude. Not my style, man. I, I just think it's cheap, you know? I mean, I want... That's why, like, I like... Dave Chappelle, I think, is, like, probably, like... Fuck, dude, the goat, honestly. Dude, George Carline. hard to beat. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, these guys, they came up with so much new material so frequently, and it was just punchline after punchline after yeah. punchline, like, nonstop. And it was so fucking good, you know? And then, like, a lot of comedians that are coming up now, man, like, I don't know. Like, you know, I mean, there's a lot of great ones. Don't oh, get yeah, me wrong. for sure, for sure. Don't get me wrong. A lot of great ones. But it's, it's also, well, I don't know. I guess it comedy... I, w- I want to say that it's changed, but it hasn't changed. Like, p- people still find the same shit funny. Yeah. Like, it's just how it's said now. Or, like, it kind of depends on what kind of comedy you like. Like, I know we like the more, like, explicit Dark shit. Dark like, humor. Yeah, like, like, yeah. R- like, I'm not apologizing. Like, this is how I fucking feel. Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, Chappelle. Like, yeah, dude. Those motherfuckers don't apologize for stuff. The more they double down, the more I like it. I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah. Like I'll, fuck yeah. the people who stand their ground, basically. Yeah. So if we ever say anything that you don't like, too fucking bad because we're not going to apologize for it. 